as I mentioned, the connector sizes are very important. And for metals, we would traditionally say, okay, an anterior portion, the connector size would be nine square millimeters, and for a posterior, 12 square millimeters. And for the most part, that was more than satisfactory. But that's nowhere near satisfactory for a zirconia unit. For a zirconia unit, we have to consider the lever arm. And what that means is that when we talk about the width of the joint, we're actually talking about it from unit to unit. We're not talking about the, the, the physical width uh, of, the, of the connector itself. And uh, Gladwell came up with this formula and it works very well. You take the height of the, of the connector, multiply it by itself, and then multiply that by the width. And that number has to come out to 27. So if you're using a regular uh, uh, HT uh, zirconia, 27 is a good number. If you're using a super translucent zirconia, you have to bump that up a little to 32. And what that shows is two things. Number one, it shows the importance of the height. The height is the most important part of the connector. The longer you can make that height, the, the more secure and the more reliable that joint will be. One of the things that we never had any concern for in, in metals and, and PFMs is that is that the biting force uh, in the mouth varies depending upon what area you're in the mouth. And the, and the, and the anterior portion, we, we could go down to as low as 90 newtons. And, and in the molar portion, we, we have a worry about as, uh, 400 newtons and, and uh, sometimes even higher depending on the person. So with zirconia, what thickness of material do we need in order to tolerate a force of 400 newtons? Well, it's actually a very easy uh, calculation. If the strength is 1100 megapascals, flexural strength is 1100 megapascals, and we want to tolerate a force of 400 newtons, then we come along to our curve and we see that the thickness of the unit has to be 6 tenths of a millimeter. That's the occlusal thickness has to be 6 tenths of a millimeter, so you have to have that much room in order to in order to have that unit survive. I think most doctors think that the zirconia is uh, indestructible, and that's one thing that is going to be a, a, a matter of education because it's not indestructible. And in a lot of cases, uh, units, I, I, we, and I'm going to show you a few where the restoration, where the indication for zirconia really is not appropriate. Here's a molar, and the occlusal thickness, the only room he got was three tenths of a millimeter. Now you can't do a PFM in this room, with this amount of room, and you can't do zirconia with this, with this amount of room either. It'll crack. It's almost guaranteed to crack. If the minimum thickness I can have on the strongest zirconia is, is, three, is, a, is a six tenths of a millimeter, if I put a three tenths unit in there, it's guaranteed to crack.